We'll get through the worst of this, hopefully without millions of human deaths. Once we get through the worst of this, are we done with the problem of emerging viruses? No, there will be another one coming, and then another one after that. Climate and infectious disease have been closely linked throughout their entire existence. When we're living in, in the midst of a crisis like this, it's very easy to focus on the problems which are right in front of our face and not to take the longer view. Unfortunately, an event like this is something scientists have been warning about for literally decades. About seven or eight out of every 10 new infectious diseases are zoonotic diseases, meaning they start in the animal world and transmit into the human environment once in a blue moon. But that blue moon is occurring more and more frequently in recent decades. Ten years ago when I was researching my book Spillover, I asked scientists to describe the next pandemic. That's when I started hearing about coronaviruses in particular. In January, when I heard the words novel coronavirus in connection with this event in Wuhan, I said, oh my God, here we go. This could be the next big one. Of course, there have been literally thousands of reports on COVID, but many of those have focused on the response. We're looking at rather more fundamental things. Why and where did this pandemic come in the first place? And what, if anything, can we do about it? In recent decades, there has been a drumbeat of spillovers of dangerous new viruses from wild animals. Machupo virus, Bolivia, 1961. Marburg virus, 1967. Ebola itself first appears in 1976. AIDS, HIV, first recognized in 1981, 1994. Hendra virus in Australia. As humans have been expanding our cities and towns into areas that were previously wildland, we're coming into closer contact with animals. When human and animal populations are both stressed, that kind of puts us and them together in a pressure cooker environment as far as disease transmission is concerned. 1997, avian influenza. 1998, Nipah virus in Malaysia. 2003, the original SARS. 2012, MERS, another coronavirus. 2015, Zika virus, and on and on and on it goes. And now we have COVID-19. One of the key findings from our report is what we call seven deadly drivers of pandemics. Firstly, increasing human demand for animal protein. And this is leading to unsustainable agricultural intensification. This is being accompanied by increased use and exploitation of wildlife for an accompaniment of the unsustainable utilization of natural resources. The fifth deadly driver is increased travel and transportation, which is moving pathogens around. The sixth is, is the changes in food supply. And then finally, climate change, a facilitator as well as a driver. We are very sensitive to our environmental conditions and so are the creatures that carry the diseases that can transmit to us, whether they're animals out in the wild that incubate diseases that can occasionally cross over and become zoonotic disease for us, or whether they're vectors like mosquitoes and other insects that can spread easily with changing climate conditions. There are many, many, many viruses out there still living in the wild animals in our diverse ecosystems. And unless we greatly restrain ourselves and learn from this event, uh, we will be exposing ourselves to more new viruses. If you can prevent the disease in the animal, and if you can prevent the disease in the environment, it will never get to the person. And that's where some of the focus should be, treating the, the causes, not, not the symptoms. We can't simply relegate infectious diseases to be the problem of some segment of the population. That's not how infections work. If we continue on the track we are on today, there will be more and more events like this and they will be devastating and they will define us.